Hello biologists, we're on lab 3.10 part 2. So make sure that you've watched part 1 before you watch this part. So at the end of part 1, we were talking about the surface area to volume ratio for QB. Here it is, data table B in question 1 is going to look like this. The surface area for QB was 6 centimeters. The volume was one centimeter cube. And so when you take six and divide it by one, you get a ratio of six. Six divided by one is six. So let's keep talking about the rate of diffusion in our model cells. Well, a rate is something that you're all pretty familiar with. 60 miles per hour is a rate. It's one unit divided by another unit. It's a ratio between two measurements with different units, like miles per hour, or if you're in Canada or the rest of the world, kilometers per hour. Miles per gallon is also a rate. Or if you have a job, dollars per hour is a rate that you get paid. Rate in this lab is millimeters per minute. A millimeter is pretty small. I have a centimeter ruler here and here's a centimeter right here. It's about as wide as my finger and a millimeter is one-tenth of a centimeter. It's that distance between my fingernails there or it's about the distance between the end of your fingernail and the pink part unless you have really long nails. The thing that we're going to measure in millimeters right now is the rate of diffusion. And we are going to tell how fast this vinegar diffuses into this block of agar by looking at the color. I'm going to drop that in there. And you notice that block of agar, it's made from sort of like jello gelatin. The outside edges, you can see it bigger on a bigger chunk are gonna to start to turn a little bit white. What gives the agar here its pink color is phenothaline. And that phenothaline changes color as it hits an acid. It's pink in base and it turns colorless in an acid. And vinegar here, it's not water, is going to turn those cubes white on the outside edges as the vinegar diffuses in. We're going to let our cubes sit in vinegar for about five minutes and then we'll cut them open and see how fast and how far the vinegar diffuses. So we're going to measure the rate of diffusion in millimeters per minute, which is pretty uh, millimeters per minute is pretty slow if you want to compare it to driving in your car. Remember, a millimeter is kind of what you measure the length of the white part of your fingernail in. But cells are pretty small. We're going to fill out data table 4, which is the rate of diffusion in millimeters per minute, a little bit later in the lab. Right now, let's talk a little bit more about our model cells. The appearance of the cubes, the model cells, are going to change over time. Remember phenothaline from an earlier lab? That's the pink stuff inside these cubes. It's pink in the base and colorless in acid. And you're going to see in a little bit that the outside of the cubes are getting very white because as the vinegar, the acid, starts to diffuse into the agar cubes, they're going to turn colorless. Agar is derived from an LJ. Um, it's also used to make cool looking desserts and culture plates for bacteria. Our model cells are made from the same kind of agar. Um, they contain phenothaline and a little bit of sodium hydroxide to make that phenothaline pink. Sodium hydroxide is a base. Question three, 
how did we measure the distance vinegar diffused? Well, we're going to measure that in just a moment. We can take a ruler and measure the distance the, that's measure the part of the cell that's white. Because this part, this white part here, is where the vinegar diffused into the cell and turned the indicator phenothaline from pink to colorless, indicating that it went from basic right here to acidic out here where the vinegar diffused in. Okay, we're gonna take our agar cubes out of the vinegar here, and we're gonna cut them in half to check out how far that vinegar diffused. Remember, our agar cube here is the same, this agar cube is the same as the one centimeter cube B. So you, we're gonna cut that cell open and you can see the middle part is pink and the outside edge here is white. And I will measure here. That's about five millimeters. This agar cube is big, much bigger than the little cube we just cut open. Here's a little size comparison. It's about the same size as this one. This cube has actually been soaking in vinegar for about 48 hours. Let's cut this one open and see how diffused a really big cell is. If I take a knife and cut this really big model cell in half, we'll look at how far the vinegar diffused over a long, long time. The vinegar barely got into this large cell at all. And this is why cells aren't really big. Here's a really big cube of agar that is really 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters squared. And we can put it into a bowl of vinegar here. And we can see how much, how far the vinegar diffuses in just five minutes. I'll slide it into the bowl of vinegar. And you can see it can sit there for five minutes this cube's a little bit purple because it got a little too much phenothaline in, but we'll still be able to tell as the vinegar diffuses in and turns it clear. Well, we're waiting for the vinegar to diffuse in the giant 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube. We can cut open a 2 by 2 centimeter cube for comparison. And you can see it made it about the same distance into the two centimeter cube as it did to the one centimeter cube. So question three on your lab sheet, how did we measure the distance vinegar diffused? Well, we measured the distance of the white part of the cube. Did the, did the diffusion distance differ between the different size cubes? Well, for the two centimeter cube and the one centimeter cube, no. And what we'll probably find out since I've done this experiment before is that the really big cube, the one that's currently soaking in vinegar that's this big, is only gonna diffuse five millimeters as well in five minutes. So here's block A, the really big cell, and here's block B, a really little cell. The distance to the vinegar diffused is gonna be the same because the cell size doesn't control how fast the vinegar diffuses. After 10 minutes, we'd only see the same thing. I'll throw a couple cubes in there just to check, but we're going to see that it just travels at the same rate, plugging along 
and after 10 minutes, we'd see that we got 10 millimeters of vinegar diffused through. I'll toss a couple of fresh cubes in there and we'll let it go for 10 minutes just to make sure that it's the same diffusion distance. So there's a two centimeter cube on each side, there's a one centimeter each cube on each side, and of course we've got our big monster 10 by 10 centimeter cube sitting in vinegar over there waiting for five minutes to go by so we can check. You can use the evidence from this graph that I made an ex from an experiment I did earlier to support your answer for number five. For number six, we want to calculate the rate of diffusion and that's going to go in data table four. The 10 centimeter cube is five millimeters in five minutes, so five divided by five is one. Same for the one centimeter cube, size doesn't change the rate. We'll have to find out if this is true for our cubes as well going 10 minutes. We'll let them soak for 10 minutes. I'm guessing it'll go 10 millimeters. And if we take 10 millimeters and divide by 10 minutes, we will again get one millimeter per minute. So it doesn't really matter how long you let the cube soak or what size they are, the rate of diffusion is the same. Number seven on your lab sheet, does the surface area to volume ratio affect the rate of diffusion? Well, when we look at the rate on a graph, we see it's one for the big cell and it's one for the small cell. So it doesn't really matter. Size doesn't matter. Just like when you drive your car across Texas, you can only go 60 miles an hour. When you drive your car across Rhode Island, you can only go 60 miles an hour. But a bigger cell here is going to take a lot longer to get to the middle. The, rate, the diffusion rate is the same, but the amount of time it takes to drive across Texas is much greater. You go the same speed whether you're driving in Texas or Rhode Island, but the distance traveled is different. So the time it takes to get all the way through a cell is very different. For number nine, did the diff vinegar diffuse all the way to the center of any of the cubes? We'll find out in a minute as we look at the camera. And what does this tell you about the surface area to volume ratio for efficient cells? Well, remember the really big cell that had been sitting in vinegar for two days? It still was a little bit pink in the middle. It's not going to get all the way through a super giant one liter cell. 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters is also one liter. So that one liter cell is too big for diffusion to work as passive transport across its membrane. Our little tiny cell, we'll see if the vinegar diffuses all the way through that. It's pretty easy to see here in the, in the cubes, the the vinegar isn't even going to diffuse all the way through the two centimeter cube and it's already all the way through the one centimeter cube. In contrast, we haven't made much progress when it comes to the 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube. It's still pretty darn purple. So for number nine, we know that small cells are really efficient because they diffuse quickly and big cells not so efficient. The rate's the same, it just takes longer to drive across Texas than it does across Rhode Island. Diffusion is what cells want to use because it's a form of passive transport. It doesn't use energy. And questions 11 and 12 are going to have to be in part 3. So I'll see you in part 3. Passive transport doesn't require energy.